Good afternoon to each and every one of you. Praise God we're able to come back with each other once again. It may be through this screen, but praise God His Word is getting out. It's going forth and it's accomplishing just what He has it to accomplish. So praise God for what He is doing in this last day and time and and how uh, how close we just actually are in the going home. So praise God for that. So before we get into the to the word tonight, let's uh let's just remember all of our, our sick and afflicted, all the ones that are, are needing of our prayers, the the ones in all in the prayer chain it's it's come across. I know uh Norma just stands out on my mind here lately, so just continue to pray for her. Uh God's gonna do a mighty work. I truly believe it. God's already had his had his hand on her and, and he's gonna pull through. God is good. God will make a way where we think our eyes is shut. We think there's not even a crack in our eyelids, but God will shine that light. So praise God for that. Let's just continue to pray for Pastor and Sister Mary Jane. Thank God that we've got a pastor that stands up in that pulpit and just preaches every bit of God's word and does not add to nor take away. So thank God for that. Um, let's just continue to just pray for one another, our lost and undone. Praise God, let's just continue to pray that whatever it takes, that they will come to know Jesus Christ, because that is needed, and that's one of the things that we're going to talk about tonight. It's going to be a little bit of a split one. It's going to be for the church, and it's also going to be for the uh, men and women out there that may not know Jesus Christ and want to get there. So let's... Let's go to the Lord in prayer before we get into it. So, Dear Heavenly Father, we praise your precious name, God, once more, Father. Lord God, as I bow my head, God, and we bow our heads, Lord God, I pray, God, that we humble ourselves, God, in front of you, Lord. God, that we may be able to come, God, boldly, God, to the throne of grace, God, that we may be able to obtain mercy in time of need, Father, looking, God, unto you. Lord God, Father, that we look, God, to grab a hold of that throne, Father. Lord God, knowing, Father, that you are the one, God, and you are the only way, Father, the only way to, through to you, Father, is through the Son of Jesus Christ. And I thank you for Jesus, Father. Thank you for the what he has, he has done for us, what he has given us, and that is salvation, that is healing. Lord, he, thank you for what you have done, Father. But I pray, God, that you touch our lost loved ones, Father. Anoint them, Father. Stir them, God. Do whatever it takes, God, and whatever is needed, Father, for them, God, to come on God into you, Father, before it's too late. And Lord, God, I ask you, God, just to continue, God, to touch Sister Norma, God. Touch, touch the ones, God, that are sick and afflicted, Father. Lord, God, uh, lend the Evans, Father, Lord God, the, the people, JC, Father, praise your precious name, God, for that testimony, God, that is uplifting, God, to your kingdom, God, continue, God, to anoint these people, God, Pastor, Sister Mary Jane, Brother David, Father, I praise your precious name, God, Sister Joy, Father, I thank you, God, for the ministers, God, thank you, God, for Brother Tony, God, Sister Norma, God, all of the ones, God, that teach your word, Brother Larry, God, thank you, Father, Lord God, and how great, God, that your that uh, the feet, God, of the ones, God, that teach you your word, Father, and preach your word, Father. I thank you, God, in every way. Lord God, just to anoint each and every one of us, God, and, and help us, God, in each and every way, Father, that we look, God, into you, Father. And tonight, Father, I pray, God, that you remove me, Father. And Lord God, let your will be done, Father, and your word go forth, God, in each and every way. Lord God, that you'd help us, God. And Sister Darlene, Father, I don't know why I missed that name, Father, but Lord God, how she taught, Father, for you, Father, and she still is, Father. And I praise your precious name, God, that we can hear that hallelujah on Sunday morning. Lord God, just anoint us all, Father, Lord God, as we come, God, unto you tonight, Father. Lord God, I pray, God, that you remove me, Father. Remove me out the way, Father. And let your word go forth, God, just as you see fit for it too, Father. And I pray, God, that you touch our nation, God. Lord God, as we're getting into that, Father, and what we have come away from you and backslid, Lord. I pray, God, that you hear, God, just as you heard Jeremiah. Lord God, that you, mm -hmm, hallelujah, God, I thank you, Father. Lord God, that you would hear, God, just those things. And, Lord God, that you would turn us away from the wicked things, God, of this world. And let us focus, God, on you. For it's in Christ's name I do pray. Amen. So, in Jeremiah chapter 15, we'll be in verse 1. And I may have said this earlier, but it, it is a 
to me it is a two-parter you know I've been studying a little bit of the, of the beginning of Jeremiah and God just led me to 15 but God was trying to do so much through Jeremiah to turn his children away from what was to come and I'm not going to try to <laughs> tell you the whole thing all into one but God was he was doing so much he was he was showing Jeremiah these things you know at the very beginning of, of the first chapter he told Jeremiah he said shut your eyes what do you see and God kept working with him and kept moving and kept showing them these things and what he was going to do and how he was going to uh, to to set him up to be that one that ministered unto, unto Israel. And praise God he did because we, we can learn so much from that right there. But let us get on to chapter 15 tonight. And we'll start on verse number 1. We'll also be in another book tonight. We'll also be in, in Acts, actually. Uh, Pastor's already covered this, but it's just something that it, it can go along straight to it. So, Verse number 1. Then said the Lord unto me, Though Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet my mind could not be toward this people. Cast them out of my sight. And let them go forth, and it shall come to pass, if they say unto thee, Whether shall we go forth? Then thou shalt tell them, Thus saith the Lord, Such as are for death to death, and such as are for the sword to the sword, and such as are for the famine to the famine, and such as are the captivity to the captivity. And I will appoint over them four kinds, saith the Lord, the sword to slay, the dogs to tear, and the fowls of heaven, and the beasts of the earth to devour and destroy. And I will cause them to be removed into all kingdoms of the earth because of uh, Manasseh, the son of Hezekiah, king of Judah, that which he did in Jerusalem. You know, I realize what what it's actually talking about here. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Don't misunderstand what I'm getting into tonight because we're close to this point. We're close to this point that God has given so much mercy. God has given so much grace. God has given so many chances. Everyone's promised that one. But God's given so many chances for us to stay in, in his will for us to honor his name and for us to accept his son Jesus Christ that there will come a day that this will also appear again you know all of these people I'm not going to get in, the, in, in big detail but there's there's a lot of people in this in this world right now that wants to erase some point or part of history well it will come back again history will repeat itself because God has shown us in the Old Testament what was coming in the New Testament and it was to prophesy for the Son Jesus Christ to come but when people don't accept him that's when revelation has to come that's when those things that are coming upon this earth has to come but listen we're going to go off on Jeremiah uh, chapter 3 real quick in verse 12. We're only going to read one one verse here. Go and proclaim, proclaim these words toward the north and say, Return, thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. You know, I can only imagine how much it would anger God and see what his anger actually is in this day and time. Because this world is dark. This world is, is in is in something that you, we never thought we'd have to see. And how how bad it, it has surfaced and how bad it has has come that we can see it just to the left, to the right, every which way to us. But God's still on the throne. He's still asking everyone 
to come to him. And I know this is the Old Testament here, but he's still there. He's still wanting his children, which we were grafted in, praise God. We were, the Gentiles was coming in, and praise God, he, he made a way for us to get there. We talked about that a, a, a few weeks back. Let's go back into uh, Jeremiah 15, and we're going to be at verse 5. For who shall have pity upon thee, O Jerusalem? Or who shall bemoan thee? Or who shall go aside to ask how thou dost? Thou hast forsaken me, saith the Lord. Thou art gone backward. Therefore will I stretch out my hand against thee and destroy thee. I am weary with repenting. How close is that? Now, the church is still here. We are still going forth and preaching God's word here. But how exactly close? And I'm not trying to scare you. Because later on down, you're going to see just how good it is to be a child of God. But I'm just laying every card out in front of this table and in front of you. To the... the Whoever may be watching this, whether it is a, people are part of our church or it's someone that clicked on this that may not know who God is and may not know who Jesus Christ is. But it, there will come a day that these things will come to pass again and that those well, that what we're talking about, it will be too late for that repentance. In verse 7, And I will fan them with a fan in the gates of the land. I will bereave them of my children. I will destroy my people since they return not from their ways. You know, we I've always had it in my mind that I've wanted to say something or, or teach something on the lack of respect for God. And this falls right to that. You know, there is no respect. There is no there's no fearing God anymore. All the churches have talked so much and about him being so merciful, him being so so gracious upon us. What happens is though that grace and that mercy lives until the seventh vial is filled. That's when the grace and mercy can't no longer continue because God's given every bit that he can give to you in order for you to come unto him and accept him. Their windows or their widows are increased to me above the sand of the seas. I have brought upon them against the mother of the young men a spoiler at noonday. I have caused him to fall upon it suddenly and terror upon the city and terrors upon the city. You know, we're, we're seeing people go through these things. You're just seeing a, a portion of it, of what is to come. She that hath borne seven languishing, she hath given up the ghost. Her son is gone down while it was yet day. She hath been ashamed and confounded, and the residue of them will I deliver to the sword before their enemies, saith the Lord. You know, in, in previous chapters, it talks about how they were playing the harlot. You know, they were running to and fro, in and out of bedrooms, per se. And how that darkness will catch up. And that's what it is right here. Her son has gone down. You know, don't, whatever you do, if you're watching this, don't let your son go down. Don't let these things come and, and, and wake you up in the wrong time of the day, in the wrong time of your life. Woe is me, my mother, that thou hast borne a man of strife and a man of, con con a man of contention to the whole earth. I have neither lent on a shuri, nor men have lent to me on a shuri, yet every one of them does curse me. You know, that goes the same thing to God. You see people, you hear people. You can't watch a good show, whether well, what you think would, should be a good show, without them cursing God. 
without them saying some vulgar language that just turns your stomach and the next thing you know you just turn it off and you're done with it you know we didn't have to get to that point we didn't have to get to the the backsliding style of we're not going to fear God anymore we're going to think his mercy's great and I'll just ask forgiveness at a later point in date and I'll be fine you know we we can no longer play that card we've got to push forward to God and get to him and be ready for that time when he does come the Lord say verily it shall be well with thy remnant verily I will cause the enemy to entreat thee well in the time of evil and the time of affliction shall iron break the northern iron and the steel thy substance and thy treasures will I give to the spoil without price and that for all thy sins even in thy borders and I will make thee to pass with thy enemies into a land which thou knowest not for a fire is kindled in my anger which shall burn upon you now we're, we're awful close to the same thing in the United States to be able to pass into an enemy you know his, his anger is is kindled you know it, there is you can't tell me that a god cannot fellowship with sin will allow some of these things to continue to go on verse 15 oh lord thou and i'm not trying to put a date on it i'm not trying to put a time on it i'm just telling you god cannot fellowship with sin that's all i'm saying verse 15 oh lord thou knowest remember me now this is listen to what what Jeremiah is, is going into saying here. This is this is right here. Just how we need to be as church. Those feet we washed Sunday. And that communion we took of. This is it right here. This is the call that we have. And that we need to be called by his name. O Lord, thou knowest, remember me and visit me and revenge me of my persecutors. Take me not away in thy long suffering. Know that for thy sake I have suffered rebuke. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. So just like today, God, God sent his son, Jesus Christ, uh, the joy of our salvation. We need to hold to that. I tell you what, there's two or three Sundays ago, it hit me so hard that I, I made my way to the altar. The joy of your salvation needs to continually hold you, that you know that you know God has taken care of you, that the long-suffering is there, that God is there for you at each and every step. For I am called by thy name. O oh Lord God of hosts, praise God he called me. He called my name and picked me and said, Son or daughter, I need you. I need you to accept my son Jesus Christ. This is like he's calling you today if you don't know. If you don't know, listen, listen carefully as we end on the very end of this. I sat not in the assembly of the mockers, nor rejoiced. I sat alone because of thy hand, for thou hast filled me with indignation. Why is my pain perpetual, and my wound incurable, which infuses, refuses to be healed? Wilt thou altogether unto me as a liar, and as waters that fall, that fail? Wherefore, thus saith the Lord, if that will return, then I will bring thee again. And thou shalt stand before me, and if thou take forth the precious forth the precious from the vial, then thou shalt be as my mouth. Let them return unto thee, but return not unto them. And I will make thee into his pe this people a fenced brazen wall, and they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee to save thee and deliver thee, saith the Lord. And I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked and redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. Church, that's for you. If you don't get a little hitch and you giddy up right there, 
if you don't have a little bit of a deep down tingle in your toes, check up. Because God's here for you. You heard me go through some of the darkest things that you may have heard in the last few days. That the things that are that are coming on this earth are, are not pleasant. And not something to be afraid of though. But to fear and have the respect for God. And to know that you know that you know that you have given your life to Jesus Christ. And believe that he shed his blood for you, for I and gave it all on Calvary that we could have the remission of our sins, the repentance of our sins. That's for you. He said, let them return unto thee, but return not unto them. In other words, be careful, you know, those people that you have hung around, maybe in the past, if they return to you, show them the love of Jesus Christ, but the ones that you hang with now, the ones that the, the, the church goers, the ones that, that are right there with you through the thick and thin that have the blood of Jesus Christ upon them, stick with them. Surround yourself with good people and make sure that you're praying for one another. But he's going to take care of us all until the very end. He says he's going to fight against us. You know, this world is going to come against us. It's going to try the left, try the right. And he's going to try to come at all sides, front and rear, too. But God's going to have you. God's got you. I know this is a, you know, don't take me for a smiley version on this camera right here. But God is good. God knows who his children are. God knows that we need him. So we call out to him just as Jeremiah has called out. Think about how gracious and how merciful he is to us. Don't let it run out. Don't let that time tick away any further. Let's go to Acts chapter 4 real quick in verse 8 through 13. If you do not know him, listen carefully right here. Because I want each and every, I don't care who it is. I don't care if we fought in the second grade or fought last night. I want you to go to heaven. I don't care. There's nothing on this earth in an argument worth worth someone's soul. Period. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, You rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth whom ye crucified whom God raised from the dead and even by him doth this man stand here before you whole you want to stand whole with him also you've got to believe because the next couple of verses tells us this is the stone which was set at naught of you builders which has become the head of the corner Neither is there salvation in any other. So there's just no other way. No other way to heaven. No other way to have salvation. No other way to be clean. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And that is Jesus Christ. So tonight if you're you're going through the left, you're going through the right, you're going you're going through the ringer, you're going through each and whatever it may be in your life. Because I know that here lately, life's got tougher. Life's buckled down. You know, I'm not going to give that devil any credit because he doesn't need it because God is where the credit is due. No. But God's still on your side. God's still fighting for you. God still wants you to call out to Him. God wants you to be just as Jeremiah was so that He can call you by His name. Are you called by His name? Just as Brother, Brother Doug said so many times, you know, a question could be the best sermon. Are you called by His name? Are you washing feet daily? Are you taking of his communion and, and burying 
the old man and dying daily and picking up the cross and continuing with Jesus Christ each day? Are we doing those things so that we can bring in more? So that people would understand just exactly that there is, that neither is there salvation in any other than Jesus Christ. I love each and every one of you tonight. I pray each and every one of you has an encouragement and a deep down that you know that God's going to take care of you. That you know, that you know that you are ready and sold to go to Jesus Christ and you have not sold to that devil. He broke your bonds. Don't go back into the chains. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I praise your precious name, God, for your grace, for your mercy, God. I thank you, Father, for being a chain breaker, God. I thank you, Lord God, Father, that, that, that there may be a darkness coming in on these days and times, Father, in this last day, Father. But I pray, God, for the light, God, that shines, Father, in the greatness, God, of things, God, that you give us, Jesus Christ, that you gave us our salvation and by the blood of Jesus Christ. And I thank you, Father, for what you've done. Father, I ask you, God, in Jesus' name, God, did you anoint each and every one one God that's listening here. Lord God, whoever made it, God, to the end of this, God, and whoever didn't even make it to the end of this, I pray, God, in Jesus' name, God, that you bless them, God, that you touch them, Lord, that you give them an almighty stirring, Father, whatever they need in their life, God, that is listening, God. If they need the things, God, that are of you, Father, I pray, God, that you bless them, Lord God. I pray, God, if they want the things, God, of this world, God, and think they need to put it before you, Father, I pray, God, that you turn that life around, God, into you. Help us, Lord God, to desire more God of you and Lord God less of God of this world Father as we make that transition Lord hallelujah God that we are ready Father Lord God for the outbreak Father Lord God for that just that trumpet to sound Father and the dead in Christ shall rise Lord God let us meet you in the air Lord help us to be the men and women God that you've called us to be Father and Lord God, let our anchors be anchored deep, God, that our roots be planted by the water, Father, Lord God, that the water of life, God, and that is Jesus Christ, help us to follow you, Father. Lord, you guide us, God, you direct us, God, and you anoint our weak, Father, that we be the men and women, God, that you've called us to be. I praise you and I thank you, Lord God, anoint the lost and undone, God, once more, God, stir them and bring them, God, into you, Father, before it's too late, whatever it takes, Lord God. And God, the same God to our country, Father. Lord God, remove the evil and wicked ways from it, God. And let us, Father, be just as Jeremiah to call out, God, unto you. For it's in Christ's name I do pray. Amen. Love each and every one of you. Pray you have a blessed week.